It's wild today on the Scrapbook Showgram. We're going to be scrapping animal photos. Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to the Scrapbook Showgram. Here's the scrapbook that we're going to make today and it's one where I'm featuring zoo photos but you're going to see that you can take the same technique and use it for really any theme. First I'm going to pull off the belly band and inside I have Girls Gone Wild and Zoo 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 and then inside um, a photo with some uh, rubber stamping and then over here the, the first page, you can see it's actually, I'm calling them window cards because they have this window flap that opens up and allows you to really feel like your eye is focusing in and pulling into that photo. And if I go to the next set of pages, each one of these, the same thing is true. This window opens to reveal the photos inside. And going through, all the pages are identical. In each case, I've used the zebra print paper to decorate the flap that opens to reveal the photo that sits inside that little window opening. And then I have some journaling in the last section. Also, um, it's fun to add journaling on the inside flaps as well. This is actually, I know I say this, but it really is not difficult to make. You're going to see in one second. Let me show you. You start with I, my dimensions were based on wanting to get the best yield. So because so many of us have scrapbook paper that's 12 by 12 inches, this is 12 by 6 inches. So all I have to do is put one slice down the middle of a 12 by 12 page and it will generate two of these what I'm calling window cards. So the first thing to do is to just fold it in half, which is going to give me a 6 by 6 page. And then to create the window, it really depends. The dimensions of this little guide are based on what size photos you want to place in here. What I've decided to do, once I decided how big I wanted my window flap to be, I created this guide so that all of them would be the same. And when it's tucked against one edge, I'm going to, with a pencil, I'm going to mark the first couple lines. And then I'll turn this and... I'll do the same thing. I'll line these up and I'll cut this last edge. This is the seam that's going to actually be the folded edge that opens and closes. So I'm not going to cut there. I did mark, however, so I can see where to stop when I'm doing the cutting. Once I've marked that, then I'll bring in my cutting mat and I'll take my X-Acto knife. And what I'm going to do is using the pencil line as a guide. You know, for some reason I'm just not in the habit of cutting with a ruler. For some reason for me it's, it feels easier to go straight if I can see. So I'm going to do that side. I'll turn and do this end. Just cutting right on the pencil line and then I'll cut the final edge. This final line. And then right now while I'm you know up close with it is the easiest time to go back and erase any pencil. If the pencil line is showing on the inside of the flap it really doesn't matter because remember the zebra paper is going to cover it. However if it's on the outside edge then that would show so I just erase it in the very beginning so I won't forget. Alright the next stage is to take this flap and to bring it back and fold it. Now you can, if you want to, you can lay down a ruler and then take your scoring tool, mine just happens to be a bone folder, line it up between these edges and mark where you want to fold. Quite honestly, I usually just fold, but you know, you do get a nice crisp edge when you mark it as well. So that gives me the window flap. And right now is a good time to go ahead and decorate. So what I have is some zebra paper and I'm going to put adhesive on the flap because I don't, if you know, your zebra paper may well be larger than it needs to be. So it's hard to know, you know, where you would actually want to do the trimming. I'm going to place my paper so that it lines up with the folded edge and with one of the edges, in this case the bottom. So I'm lining it up here and I'm lining it up with the fold 
and if I open it up, you can see that it's a little bit bigger on this one edge in particular. So what I'll do is I'll trim off the excess just with my scissors any place that it protrudes over the edge of that window flap. And then there's also just a little edge here that I don't want to show. So I'm going to go back and trim that as well and get rid of any excess. So once you've done that with all the pages, you have the makings of the book. In order for the, the last page to, to close like a book and not have the last page be what would feel like a front rather than a back, you do need to have an odd number. And I, I noticed that as I was putting these examples together, I didn't do, I think my book um, here has seven pages, but it needs to be three or five or seven or nine. It can be as long as you want, but in order to close like, a, like you're used to seeing a book close, it needs to be an odd number. What you do once you have the pages all window flaps created and decorated is you're going to overlap them. So what I'm going to do is overlap, and I'll stop and I'll put adhesive. This is going to overlap the tail end of that one. So let me put some adhesive. You could, if you wanted to, you could place your photo, and I'll hold this up in a minute and show you. You could place your photo back here right now and put your adhesive and hold it right in place. I opted to trim my photo, so I'm going to place it inside in the, at the very end. But either way works. So I'm going to just line up this edge with the fold and then press down to give me this first page. And now I'm going to go ahead and position the next page. So I'll do this. And now, as I said, however many photos you want to feature will dictate how many of these cards that you're going to lay out in order to create this one long accordion style of scrapbook. I have just, this, this is three. I have another one here that I could do, but this is enough for you to get the idea. So what's going to happen then is you would just keep going until you have as many as you want. What was this flap is going to be reverse folded. So I've got the fold mark. I'm just going to fold it the other direction because this now is going to become the front cover. And then I'm going to fold. I'm going to reverse this fold so that it becomes accordion folded. And of course, if I had kept going, it would be much longer, and you would end up having all the accordion pages, as many as you want, in order to accommodate how many photos you have. We talked about adding the photo inside. Let me take the adhesive. Um, oh, actually, before, let me show you. When you're placing the final page, you do you end up with one extra flap, you know, because you just keep going along the edge. So you do need to cut one 6x6 six six page that's going to be positioned for the final page. So I'm going to turn this over and place my adhesive and lay this down in order to get the surface that I need in order to place a photo in what will end up being the final page. Now there's a, some place to place your photo and actually I put journaling in this final page but as long as it's open let me go ahead and show you if you trim your photos you can apply them at the end as well by just sliding them into this open area like so so that as you open the flaps you have your photos inside. Now that's going to create all the pages. Let's look at the decoration and then at the belly band. In order to decorate the cover, I used a rubber stamp to just write out the word zoo. So whatever the theme is of your scrapbook, um, if you have an alphabet stamp like this, um, this one is from Wordsworth, you can you know, use it to spell out anything. So I'm going to use the clear mount because I'm using these nifty clear stamps. And I've already positioned the O. What I do is, because it's going to read it's a clear stamp and it can be confusing. I actually hold the stamp to me and I place it so that I'm looking through and once I get it into position I'll hold it up and show you. So you can see there that I've begun to spell the word zoo. I don't have another O so I'm gonna stamp this and then I'll take this O and I'll make you know I'll stamp a second time. 
So what I'm going to do with the cover of mine is take my ink pad and ink it up. And as long as I have these two letters together, when it's clear like that, you can really see when it's inked. I'm going to go back and I just have to make sure that I don't put another word too close because I have to leave room to add the next O because we don't want it to say zo. <laughs> we want it to say zoo. So I'm going to stamp, and I like it to feel like it goes all directions, really random, as if somebody took the word zoo and they just threw it onto the page and it just kind of scattered all around into all these different positions. I really like that casual look that you get from doing it that way. I'm not bothering to do much in the middle because I'm going to have a design in the middle. I do want a little something something because I want it to look natural. So whatever I have in here, it would be good if it looks like something goes over the edge. And I'll put this here to protect this and I'll do this, what I was just saying, I'll go right off the edge with this because it just looks more realistic if you do that. You can continue to stamp. Now what I'm going to do is take and I'll just remove, normally I just use my hands, but I'll show you. If I try to get all the ink off of this, then I'll take that Z off. And now with just the O, and I can see I've gotten some ink on here, so I do want to get rid of that because I don't want it to show up on the paper. Now all I need is just to do this O. So, oops, and I can see I've got it a few places. <laughs> My hands are going to look really nice when you see up close. But now I'm going to go back and add that second O to each of those words so that my zo becomes zoo. So I won't bother to do the whole thing, but I'll do one more as long as I have it here just so you get the idea. Ooh, that one came pretty close to that Z. So, oh, I can't, as long as I'm right here, let me just do this guy too. So you go ahead and you write z the zoo as many times as you might want to. And then if you look back at mine, you can see that I've just layered papers here. And I'll bring them up so you can see. I took these different colors and I stacked them like this. The first one I actually rubber stamped using a pencil eraser and a watermark ink pad. So I'll go ahead and I'll just stamp and in the time that it takes me, I may not get as many dots on there. I just want to create what looks like polka dot paper and the watermark ink pad allows you to just deepen whatever color you're stamping on. So it really, it ends up giving you the ability to create polka dots on any paper. Once again, you want to also go off the edges with this, just the same way as we did with Zoo, because it feels a little more casual. You're going to stack these elements together, so what I'm going to do is place the polka dot on top of this slightly deeper mat, and I just have the narrowest of edges, and the reason for that is because I'm going to layer it one more time, when you're layering multiple layers, if all the edges are the same, it tends to look really sort of boring and your eye doesn't know where to go. It's sort of everything, when it's too symmetrical, too much the same. If you're going to have multiple mats, notice that I have a fat one and then a skinny one. And if I was going to have another one, I would want a fat one and then if another one, a skinny one. But alternating is just much more visually appealing. At this point, I've taken my white pen and I've drawn on the black paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and place this. It can be, I tend to like things that aren't perfectly symmetrical, so rather than going right in the middle, I usually try to go so that it's a little closer to either the top or the bottom, one or the other. And I'll trim off the excess. And then with red, I'll go back and add what will become the title. And then what I did is I used a, a white pen to write my title. Um, and if you're concerned that maybe, you know, when you're writing it, you're worried that you might spell it wrong or you might not like the lettering or it might look um, a little off center, you know, when you're handwriting it yourself, there are 
chances for things to go wrong. So what I usually do is I'll write the title or the journaling, whatever I'm going to do by hand, on a piece that's separate and loose, like this red piece was. So if I didn't like it, I haven't messed up my whole thing, I just have a red strip to do over. Um, at this point, then, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my adhesive on this element and I'll place it right in the middle of what will be the cover. And you can, I can see already how much better it would look if I have more of um, more zoos going off the edge. So I probably would go back and add some more. Um, and that decorates the cover. And when it comes to the belly band, let me show you how this works. Um, to begin with, I started with a strip of yellow paper. Now, how long it is, is going to be based on how many cards you have in your stack and how thick the paper is that you used. Also, the dimensions that you choose, you know, for the card itself may vary. You might not make a, a folded up six by six. So what I did was the width of this strip is, um two and a half inches is the width. And then the length, once again, it's going to vary completely. Even this is a little loose because I don't have all the pages that I had in my original. But basically, you want to cut a piece of paper and you want to make sure that it comes over with a little overlap. And what I've got is, to accommodate the thickness, I have a little spine. So I have about a quarter inch double fold on both of these edges. And once you have those, then it's going to be simply a task of placing the zebra paper and it's I'm going to take and add adhesive to the zebra paper I won't stop to do the whole thing but you'd want more than that and I'm going to position it so that I go to the end and I want a border of yellow showing on both sides so and how I start it if I start crooked it will get more exaggerated and it will become more crooked um, as I go on. So I don't push down too hard until I make sure that it's okay. So at this point I'm going to go back now and I'm going to reinforce the folds. That's why I do the folds first in the yellow paper because now it's easy to go back and just reinforce them with my fingers on both of the spines on the two sides for this belly band. Now I've already gone ahead and I've trimmed one of the ends into this triangle shape, but I didn't do the other one so I could show you how you would want to do that. What I did was I took the yellow paper, and if you look closely you can see, you can see all the ink that I made a mess of, but you can also see my pencil marks. I've marked the middle of this two and a half inch, um, the width here, so the middle mark is here, and then I came in an inch and I marked and an inch here and a mark, or it might be like three quarters of an inch. doesn't matter so much what it is, but it has to be the same on both sides. Now this is where I'm going to cut from here to here and from here to here. That's how you get the first cut. Once you have the first cut, then it's really a no-brainer. I'm just going to set this down and I'm going to cut right along the edge of one because now there's no way that it won't match based on the fact that I'm going to use my one edge as a guide for the second edge. So now that I have both of these, I'm going to go back and you can use um, a different whatever size circle punch. I think I'm going to go from this end so that I can really kind of see. And if I can't see too well with my eyes, if the punch is kind of in my way, sometimes I use a pencil. It may not be the right dimension. It may be a smaller circle than I need or a bigger circle than I need, but it tells me that that's the middle. And I, I know that that's what I want to use as a guide, so that when I come in here, I'm going to punch to get that circle, and then I'll punch on this end to get this one. It's going to wrap around, and it's going to be held closed. Remember, I don't have to open and close it by untying this ribbon. Because it's a belly band, it's going to just slide on and off. So I can go ahead and I can make a nice, oops, a nice really tight knot with the ribbon. So once I pull it through, I'm going to go ahead and just tie one knot, get it nice and secure, and then I'll put my finger there to try to keep it 
this is where could you come here and put your finger right here for me please there we go and then I'll trim off the excess because I don't want it quite that long it's always easier to start with it longer and trim it off so that's going to give you the belly band that then can slide on and off and if you look at my completed one here the last thing was I just with the same white pen I wrote it's wild and I matted the red onto orange and that gives me when I fold it back into place it sits right over that title in the middle and it gives me just a really fun book when you fasten several window cards together it's easy to accordion fold them closed into just a really sassy little scrapbook keep those comments coming and be sure to subscribe and share us with your scrapbooking friends bye for now